Now, so the business, mm -hmm. this is a family-owned and operated legacy business. Yes, yeah. And it started, as we were just saying, uh, off camera, uh, down a little bit, up in town yep. uh, in 19... Uh, 1942. Wow. May 1st. Yep. So that was the first inception of this. Now, what products were carried in that first business? Uh, the first business started out as a fountainette. Uh, so they just sold, uh, you know, sodas, milkshakes. Um, oh, that's awesome! And, so it uh, had the little like your host counter with the little stools. Yeah, yeah they, the had the, they had the stool and, and the sodas, and uh, yep. And then they they had the uh, just cheeseburgers and, and things like that up there. Right. The quintessential uh, American, exactly hot dog, hamburger, <laughs> malt stand, really. Yep. Right? Um, now, was tourism big back then, or no? Was no. it more of a town? Because a lot of yeah. these towns were more towns on a lake, and they would get an influx, but it wasn't the main. I th it was just starting to uh, become, you know, a tourist area. Uh, it was, you know, slowly built up over the years. Right. Um, but uh, yeah, there wasn't as much to anywhere near as much tourism as there is. Right, because now it's the industry, really. In yeah. This area. It's yeah, definitely. Industry. Everyone depends on the on the tourists now. And this is your season, so thank you for doing this yeah. during your season. Oh, yeah. um, so now your grandparents started this, and you said your grandpa went off to war. Uh -huh. And how long had your grandpa had it before he left? Uh, they, well, they started it just before he went off to war. They started it in 1942, and uh, just after they started it, then he, I Here believe just a few months, yeah, he was off. He went off to war, and then my grandmother, uh, she, she ran it. Wow. Uh, until so you he know got what's back. awesome? That was, you know, the Rosie of the Riveter idea. We can do it because these women had to just get in there. Yep. And they did. And it was the foundation of women's lib because they were like, when the guys came back, they were like, you know what? <laughs> yep. Why are we, right? Oh, yeah. She had it in everyone in town. They had in the, uh, the front of the store, uh, the fountainhead up there, they had all the pictures of all the servicemen uh, from the area. Wow. Uh, that were over overseas, and, and they had the pictures of all of them in the window, so. That's cool. It was kind of a And then, a neat uh, thing. so it was a malt shop, really. Hamburger, hot dogs, french fries. Yep. And uh, when did Candy come into play? Was that when you Can guys moved down here? Uh, candy started just after he got back from the war in 1946. Uh, they purchased the, uh, there was a barn out behind the Fountainette area, and that's where they started making uh, what they call all-day suckers. And uh, well, they were just giant suckers. Right. <laughs> and he got somehow he got, you know, a couple big sales. He would, uh, he got it down to the uh, New Orleans fair, mm -hmm. and he was he was selling them all over the place. Uh, so, so just that was straight a, these regular suckers on a stick yep. all days, and that oh. was his primary thing he was selling. Yeah, that's what he, he started out doing, and then then he gradually got into everything that we have today. But now, do you guys still make those? We do, yeah. That's awesome. That's the original, right? <laughs> That's the original so, sucker, yep. So, and then uh, candy, chocolate, chocolatiering uh -huh. uh, came in relatively soon. Yeah, right shortly after that, after that uh, just a few years later, then they purchased the property up here where our current location is. And uh, then he started, then he gradually got into everything that we're making today. Um, it was fudge, goat, goat milk fudge was one of the first. Uh, first items, and then you know, and then everything we have in the case, all the caramels mm -hmm. and creams, and um. and then uh, that was was that the secondary big thing that so you did the all days, and then he started the goat. Was it goat milk back then? It was goat milk. Yep. It's so been wasn't milk. that rare to do that or no? Yeah, it's kind of unique. There isn't too many. Uh, there isn't too many uh, people that sell goat milk fudge. I see it occasionally, but uh, yeah, there's not there's not that much goat milk around. So. And it must but that used to be a huge seller for us. He had it on stands up and down uh, Route 20, and um, <laughs> I love that. Yeah, so, so he, he would drive around in his Webb's truck, and he would drop yep, off. That's drop. Really we had roadside cool. stands all up and right. down. It was before the throughway was in uh, from here to Buffalo. Okay. So people were traveling, um, you know, on the side street. So they he had them all over the place. So. That's really cool. So yeah. he was a sales. I mean, he did with the quintessential thing that you did back then. Yeah, oh yeah. He had know, this he was, awesome product. And, Yep, he just went out door to door and was selling it all over the place. But, and you know, I mean, I love when people still do that yep. because that's how you build a business and that's how you really build a business, yep. you know, because nowadays I think they teach kids this whole other system. But when it comes down to it, it's about people and it's about this. Just, yep. You know, and you got this awesome product. Do you want to carry it? Getting out and you had a good product and you just got out and sold it.
<laughs> I love any, it. Any place he could. <laughs> and then, so, and that would always obviously incentivize people to come to the shop, yep. right? It's kind yeah. of almost like, a, I like that aspect of uh, food business because that incentivizes people and it's a nice guerrilla marketing tactic. You know, you're going to sell a little bit, but it's nice advertising too. Yeah. Yep. So now when you guys moved down here, it was just this awesome little place that is now uh, this, this huge complex that you guys have. Yep. It was sitting on this property. Yep. Um, for how long did that? Yeah, we, so we moved down here in the early 50s and it started out as a kind of similar, there was a Fountainette type of um, uh, shop right here, right in the middle of our, our current location. Okay. And uh, they sold just cheeseburgers, fries, you same know, thing. hot dogs, milkshakes, yeah, same type of thing. But we've added the suckers and the goat milk fudge. Right? Yep, and then he added, then he added on the candy shop uh, building right next to it, uh, which is here our present location. And um, and then the restaurant and the bowling bowling alley was added on. Mm -hmm. um, and so then, this was kind of like when you think about maybe that era. And like mm -hmm. I said, I don't do a lot of preliminary research because I want to be just as surprised as the audience. Yeah. You are the complex in town at that point. Yep. Right. This is where the congregational point. We'd have a bowling alley. We have our little hot dog stand. Yep. We've got our candies, and yep. you're right on the tip of the lake. Yep. We're right. So it turned into that. Yep, exactly. So. It, which really helped business, I'm sure. Oh, definitely, right? yep. Mm -hmm. And uh, how many years and now did, are we talking for that? Maybe up to the 60s or so? Yeah, we, through the, uh, we just kind of expanded here. The, the, the candy shop was, was expanded, the uh, restaurant, bowling alley. And then in 1970, then the first part of the hotel was built. And, and that hotel uh, is in the same location. Yes, as, yep. And uh, how many rooms do you guys have there? There was 26 rooms originally when they started in 1970. Mm -hmm. And then in 1994, then they added on another 26 rooms. Wow. Uh, yep, so we had 50, so you have 52 rooms. rooms. Yep, yeah. we have 52 rooms currently. Um, and then you guys are open all year too, right? Yep, we're open year round. Everything, right? The hotel and, and yep. whatnot. Because uh, I came down here in winter, and to tell you the truth, it was awesome. Yeah, we, it's, uh, you know, it slows, down quite a bit in the winter, but uh, you know we always hope for a good snowmobile season. So in January and February, uh, as long as there's enough snow for the trails to be open, we're right. we're usually pretty full. Are you guys a on a months. snowmobile path at all? Yep, and we're yep. Our uh, the trails are located right on our property, and we own we own a, a mile or about a half mile of the uh, of the trail system over here to the left. Oh, that's awesome. So, so and there's about littered. 500 miles of trails right. that are connected to the trail. So, well, And so you're literally, like, are you guys on those map, you know, those little stop maps they have? Yeah. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So, mm -hmm. uh, so that's got to help during the winter. I mean, people must stay here sometimes. Right? Oh, yeah. Yep. Yeah, we stay pretty busy in the winter, so. Yeah. Yeah, um, now, so the hiking, see, I didn't know there's hiking paths here. Uh -huh. So you have hiking paths and snowmobile paths because they're the same path. Mm -hmm. Now, what about around the lake? Do you have, is there lake access? There isn't too much lake access around. It's mostly cottages all the way around the lake. Right. Uh, there's just a couple beaches around um, right up here, a uh, quarter mile up the road, uh, the Mayville Park has a small beach. And Which is that's great for one you of the guys. Few, few around the lake, yeah. So other than, right on the tip, right so, on the tip. Yep. Um, and now the hotel, when you guys first started it, did you, so the hotel was here, the mm -hmm. restaurant started around the same time period. No, the restaurant was here before. Uh, well, no, uh, but the expansion of the restaurant. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Yep. So you, so you had the smaller restaurant here, yep. then the hotel, the bowling alley. Yep. And, and then the third expansion was. Uh, yeah. And then they built the, uh, the deck, the outside deck to the restaurant. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe that was somewhere around the, in, uh, they added that in the mid 80s. I mean, your grandpa must have said to himself, because you have to have a gift shop in a place like this. So this was a natural extension of the candy business. Yeah, there wasn't much, uh, you know, with the tourism just starting up, there wasn't, I don't know if there was really any other gift shops around the area. So it was probably one of the first gift shops around. And, uh, and you have yeah, great, just kind of evolved. Yeah, I love the uh, logos on the shirts. Do you guys make any of this stuff yourself, or do you have private vendors that supply you? Yeah, no, we just have yeah, private vendors here. We, just, we order them once a year, so and you, try to get a little bit of you know, you, stuff for everyone. You guys kind of did, like, it's like a total complex, but in a very unassuming way, uh -huh. you know? Yeah, it's kind of... Kind of just gradually spread out 
you know, throughout the years to uh, to what it is today. So it was, I don't know if he ever had the, all this planned in his head when he started, but it just kind of uh, gradually evolved into this. So in the candy shop, we make we make everything here, uh, just about everything here, and we have all you know caramels and creams, candy bars. We have um, goat milk fudge is our specialty. We have. Uh, molasses sponge, peppermint patties, peanut brittle, uh, saltwater taffy, mm -hmm. and then the suckers are a big the, seller. The all so, day, uh, right yep. there, forever suckers. Yep. Um, the molasses sponge, that's a different sponge. Uh, yeah, it's the same, it's pretty much the same sponge as what everyone makes. We, we use molasses in it, uh, so you get a little bit of the molasses taste, uh, but it's it's the same sponge, basically, as whatever. But it's like else. a little richer too, with the molasses, uh, maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe a little bit, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so, is, are these? But these are your family's recipes, and he makes them, or? Yep. Yeah. He's well. He, mm -hmm. My grandfather just acquired them throughout the years, and uh, yeah, he st he started off making it. We had Emerson Chandler was our original candy maker. He started out with my grandfather, mm -hmm. and uh, he was here for over fifty years. So. Wow. He's. Yep. He. He was here right from the conception, right. and uh, he just retired a few years ago. So wow! So then you got this guy. This yep, and, and then guy. yep, we got Joe McCartney now has taken over, and he, yeah, he does a great job for us. Um, now, so the hotel and the golf course. The golf course is a, an awesome addition to this. Yeah. Um, yeah. Now. Do you guys like are the, what's the hours on the golf course? Are you open as long as the shops open? That type yep. of thing. Yep. Uh, well, this uh, golf course is open every day, eleven to nine. And then if you're staying in the hotel there, you can you can just grab clubs, you know, earlier. Oh, you sure. can. So. Wait, is it included? Uh, no, it's not included, okay. but uh, yeah. Okay, as I was gonna say, you would like there be I'd be as a kid, <laughs> everything else would be gone, and I'd just be over there 24/7. Yeah, so if you yeah. have kids, you can if you're in the hotel there, you can grab the clubs just about any time. So. And I love the fact that it's next. To, so honestly, for a family, it's great. Uh -huh. Because this isn't somewhere you have to drive to in town. Yep. It's right on premises. That might have been your idea, is that why not? We try to give people as many things to do, you know, when they're here. With the, I think it's a perfect spot for families because, you know, you got the, you got the candy store, gift store, restaurants. You got the miniature golf. And we got an indoor pool and a hot tub. And then you got the marina across the street where you can rent paddle boats and and uh, wakeboards and mm -hmm. um, yeah. And, and then it's a it's just this huge package. Yeah, and then there's and then just all the other stuff that's close by. So mm -hmm. I a, well, I think when you're on vacation, when you have a hub like this, it's so much so much better than a hotel with nothing. Yep. Because this becomes it's almost like there's a vacation and then there's the other vacation. Yep. And exactly. if you don't feel like making the drive 25 minutes, you can stay here and still have a lot of fun yep. and still feel like you're on vacation and yep. you enjoyed yourself. And honestly, these type of vacations are the best. Like I told you, even when I was in California, this was a rarity. Yeah. You know. Yeah. No, there isn't too many family-run businesses around. It's, not you like the, this. You got the chain yeah. Yeah. hotel. So. Um, now, at the hotel, you have different, we have double, single, I mean, do you have, like, suites over there? Or? Uh, yeah, we're, we're turning a few of the um, rooms, uh, the original part of the hotel, we're turning a few of those into some uh, few suites over the, over the fall here into the winter. So we're going to have some suites available, and then we have uh, rooms, um, you know, more economy rooms for fishermen, um, you know, and then just local people that are here at work, construction. Um, That's a great idea. Workers. Sure. And, then, and then the newer section of the hotel is all being um, fixed up. And so we got rooms well with private balconies, hot tubs, fireplaces. Wow. And so it's so kind of fall or winter. Kind of covers all. Sure. Well, because you have a hot well, tub and a the whole range fireplace of... in winter and fall, yeah. <laughs> right? Yeah. That's awesome. Yeah. Um, okay. Is there anything else you want to add? Uh, yep. I think it's just just a great centrally located place to come visit because of the uh, you know the marina and sure and you know, now we have the Venus Bay or the uh, Chautauqua Pops just mm -hmm. down the street here, just a quarter mile, so within walking distance. And the beach. And and then they got the beach and the park. And well, so that's it's a where you guys. Great place for families to come. So. Yeah, and that's your strength is yep. that it's this beautiful family-run facility. Yep. You have everything you need to just. You could just come here 
for a couple of days and park the car and just have fun. Yeah, exactly. And then if you want to go, you can go explore the region and use this as your home base. Yeah. But having the pops, having the beach, having a boat dock access here that doesn't, you know, you're not even charging for that, which is yeah, amazing. No, it's, yeah, free dock. Yeah. And you know, you've got the golf and the restaurant and the shops. It's a great experience. Oh, definitely. Yeah, definitely. You know. Um, uh, what about like if I wanted to do like a party for with Webb's Candies? Like, do you guys do group? Yeah, no, uh, we'll we'll do just about anything. Uh, you know, we, you can have order platters of candy, or you can just uh, individual boxes. Uh, you know, favors for weddings, mm -hmm. uh, events, anything. You any want. any type of events we can we can work with just about any. Possibly anybody. just give yeah. a call a couple weeks out. Yep, okay. just you can just call and we can work out pretty much anything you need, so. Awesome.